Hey, what's up guys? As you've seen, I pulled the motor out of my Corvette because it made low oil pressure and right now we are at just racing in Vegas. Quickly learned that there was a problem with the dreaded O-ring for the oil pickup, which is a really common problem on these motors. So we were facing a predicament what are we going to do how far are we going to go with this rebuild obviously these guys are super professional they did our formula drift motor they do forest wangs motors and a whole bunch of high-end motors we decided to take a look at the rod bearings which were stock and those are aluminum which is great because that means that the crank has less risk to be damaged from low oil pressure so we pulled them all out obviously kept everything in line and as you guys can see these guys are helping me out to get that motor done quickly Everything over here is done in the clean room and in this case we decided to pull the motor apart just in a normal shop and clean everything and check everything out on the fly doing me a huge favor fitting me in right away and we're checking the crank over here not too bad I really know any big damages on there so uh, we can get away with freshening up the crank obviously mark everything really well you can see I engraved the rods a little bit over here not too crazy not to make too much mess of it and uh, Johnson short throw lifters that we installed the last time adjust racing are coming out as well as well as the Harland sharp adjustable rockers the heads were done about 500 miles ago or like a thousand miles ago um, and obviously we want to um, do this like nice nice and quick over here so the crank was polished and checked completely by these guys over here all looked really good nothing to worry about over there and it went into the parts washer and was given to go ahead to be used again with obviously new bearings then we found out that the shop that had done the cam prior to my ownership did not do the cam bearings which really was not nice um, so we had no choice but to remove those guys as well really is a job that can go wrong really quickly or if you use like cheap or bad tools super important part because it also affects your oil pressure obviously there you can see the copper already coming through and they need to sit in a certain orientation so i'm super happy that these guys are um, willing to replace them for me on the fly uh, as i said before insanely happy with such quick servers there's a lot of shops that can do things that take like months but these guys are always fast and always good we decided the heads only needed a really thorough cleaning it's still super important when you have bearing material that's bad that everything gets cleaned here the heads go into a ultrasonic cleaning bath super important same thing with the block we left the old rod bearing or the old cam bearings in there because it goes over that pin and we didn't want to damage the new ones that's what that block looks like cleaned up with the old cam bearing still in it and look at how nice that cleaned up it's such an important part of the process stock piston still in it i didn't want to get different pistons or rings because this motor has a really good ring seal it makes good power it has really um, no blow by or anything no, nothing in the catch can so i didn't want to mess with that the cross hatching all looked really good but of course we want to get all those little tiny particles out there was nothing in the oil pan but like obviously a lot in the filter but you really want to get rid of all that stuff and like i said before this shop is so awesome so we're now doing this motor build on the fly in a normal shop but these guys really are super professional they have all the toys and all the knowledge to use them obviously also cleaning all the other parts like the pan the main caps the valley cover and i brought the oil cooler and the lines with me we decided to just go full oem get everything stock in there everything original gm which is not always what people do but in this video you already learned that it's nice to have rod bear material that does not eat up the crank in this case everything obviously was easy to get thanks to just racing so we have all our stuff over there starting to pull out the cam bearings and um, like i said before this is not really as easy as it seems and these guys are doing an amazing job over there taking the old cam bearings out and getting the new guys back in there so i have full peace of mind it's super important to do this stuff if you do a cam swap but most people don't do it when they leave the car the motor in the car all the stuff came out really clean from the parts cleaner and as you guys know it goes into the ultrasonic after that for the cam retainer plate just racing has this little trick 
which I'll show you guys later in a little bit, but it's really nice um, to do that trick on the LS motors. The cam is back in with the new cam bearings. Really happy about that because I kind of knew they didn't do them on the cam. Then we're going back to all the other bearings, the rod bearings and the main bearings. The crank is back in the engine and there you can see that little hole which actually puts a little bit of lubrication on the chain which uh, really makes a difference on these motors. Obviously super important to use a good torque wrench and know what you're doing which is the paramount thing on these motors. A lot of guys just get like cheap torque wrenches or they mess with it a little bit like, oh, it will be fine. Nope, that really determines how healthy your motor is. And these guys have done this a million times before and really happy with that. And um, I could really tell that this is the way to do it. Um, there you can see the tensioner. We ran a K-Tech upgrade um, chain on this thing which is the same chain as uh, Corvettes used in Le Mans on the C5 and the C6 race cars so another one of these little things it's just important make sure the tensioner is okay the old tensioner had some pieces in the sump actually so we really had to replace that one and everything goes back in nicely after this the heads went back on obviously torqued to correct spec we use the stock bolts for that nothing wrong with that now the reason for our problem the o-ring if you get a melling pump in this case a 296 pump it just comes with really clear instructions so you can't mess that up make sure that you put a little bit of grease on that o-ring when it goes in the pump also needs to be shimmed correctly it's really important to get that right a lot of people overlook that but in this case these guys obviously know what they're doing putting a little bit of grease in the right spots making sure that that thing is going to have a healthy service life the next thing that's really important and also often overlooked is the pickup tube and that's a lot of source for pickup problems you measure the sump first to have a look at what you're kind of like shooting for and then with your pickup tube the way i do it i put some clay on the pickup tube then i put the pan on it with the gasket and see how much of a gap i have over there so you want to be shooting anywhere between a quarter and three eighths um, in millimeters like six to eight millimeter basically um, you really want to mess with it a little bit until you get it right. Oftentimes they don't sit 100% straight, so they are a little bit to one side. So you're going to have different readings on one side of the pot and the other. So kind of like get in the middle of that. Then I use the Primatex stuff. This is also often overdone. People put way too much RTV on these motors. It needs almost nothing. You got to make sure that the front and rear covers are lined up though. So you where you see me put that gasket right now that needs to be 100 percent flush with the block if it's not it doesn't matter what you do with the rtv it's always gonna leak so line that up correctly with the front and rear seals obviously then um obviously get, get every corner of that thing not too much and with your finger flatten it out so it cannot form a little bit of a drop that falls into the pan because i've seen it a million times and pick up obviously now in the right position then it's also super important to torque the pan to the right spec don't overdo it because then your gasket is also gonna leak that was the last step we put the balancer on it make sure that you can grab the flywheel or the crank when you're tightening the cam bolt and the crank bolt and everything went back together thanks to these guys helping me out on the fly and um, even helped me out put the motor back in with the forklift so super happy just racing thank you guys so much for all that you guys do for us on the fd program on other people's fd programs and now with the drift week motor insane hit these guys up if you need anything it's one of the few shops that i trust and um, i'm sure that they will do a great job for you guys as well so that's probably the last video of this year thank you guys so much for coming along and keep in mind that we supply all these amazing brands like wisefab feel the new dmi quick changes but also kbd and basically anything that you can imagine 
uh, we can assist you with or advise you with and um, that's what makes everything go around obviously my channel is not very big i try to put as much time and effort in it as possible i love seeing all you guys' reactions but there really is not a lot of monetization going on so we're really um, looking at doing business with you guys selling you guys parts and um, a lot of other stuff comes from that. Obviously, um, really, really happy with the Drift Week situation and how we're doing with that. So awesome to take you guys along and meet a lot of you guys there as well.